Uh, hello and good afternoon. We will start with today's session. Uh, so yesterday, what we did was we basically created. Uh, let me share the screen first. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I hope that everyone can see my screen. Right. So yesterday, what we did was let me open the project first. This one. Okay, so now we are ready. So yesterday, uh, what we basically did was we created a three JavaScript file. Right. So yesterday was a lot of coding. Some of you may have watched the video or some of you were present yesterday. So you must have seen that there was a lot of coding yesterday. And we tried to go through like all the coding step by step. We tried to learn and uh, I tried to explain you all the coding block by block as well as line by line. So yesterday, if you remember, we had a small bug in our program where the Doctor list was actually visible. Uh, sorry, not the doctor list. That is a different project. But the product list was actually visible. But the issue was that it was only one product at a time. Correct. And what we wanted was to have all the products in a list format. But the list was not forming. Let us say if I have two or three items in my cart, only the first item was visible. So that was the bug. And uh, that bug can easily be solved because in yesterday, if you remember, we had set like item name in our HTML equal to order. And then we are basically uh, like uh, we are making an array, right? So order is an array. So we are saying that order one and then from order one, I want to get the first element. So that will be the name of my product and order I will be basically order number one and the for like the second element that will be on position one. That will be price. So we had done this and the we have created a for loop to like go through all the order, but it was not populating like for all the order only and only first order was visible because we were using equal to. What we had to do was we had to say plus equal to, right? So if I just run this application. Okay, so first item is to activate the virtual environment. So let me see. I have the virtual environment here, right? And the name of virtual environment is project. So to activate the virtual environment, I did show you yesterday also that I need to access the root. And then I will say that uh, name of my virtual environment project and then name of the script. Say script and then if I say activate, then activate and then if I press enter, now I am in my virtual environment. Now I can say that Python, manage.py run server now uh, we have seen what this is like this will basically run a server uh, so let the server start and then i will show you uh, okay so it is checking uh, i am opening the project for the first time that is why it is uh, checking something so okay so this is the issue because i have not uh, started the zam server so it is not able to connect to the mysql that database that we have created so make sure that we are starting the mysql i am using mysql from the zam right it gives me access to admin panel so that is why i'm using it and uh, sometimes error like this happen okay this is really common you just need to start again okay the, this uh so let's see why. Okay, so sometimes what happens is that let us say there is a MySQL diamond running. So it will be like MySQL D dot exe. Okay. 
So if I open my task manager, you should know this thing because when you'll be working with the server, sometimes what happens is that in Linux, we can easily find out like which daemon is running. But uh, the problem with Windows is that you have to know like uh, which, uh, which executable is belongs to like which service. So for my SQL, it is my SQL. Just type it and then uh, you will see that there are a lot of background services. Yeah, so it is like currently running inside XAMPP control exe. You can see it is mysqld.exe, right? So just check if you are getting error, check if this is running or not. If it is not running, then there is some issue with your installation, right? So now the server is running. I will just uh, stop and then run again. Yeah, so now you can see that it has uh, started running. What I will do is, Second thing that I want to tell you, yesterday there was a problem where uh, there were some files that were caching, right? So in the cache memory, it was already caged. So when we will reroll, uh, when like we will uh, basically, let us say, when I made changes in my code and I was reloading the browser, it was not visible. So that issue can easily be solved if you have this extension, like uh, let me see the name of the extension that I have. So that is history and cache cleaner. Uh, like uh, hyphen smart clearance. So it will clear the cage and then you can again use it. For working with things like Django and Web Developer, it is important that you have this kind of extension so that uh, you know you can keep your browser fresh every time you test out the application. Because these kind of things do happen in the development server, right? Because when we are developing, it happens. And when we are like we're talking about the client, we can basically manage the client uh, storage Basically, we have cage cleaners and everything that we can do. And we'll be seeing that in the code itself, we have a written line of code which will automatically clear the like uh, client's browser local history, local page, right? So what I will do is I will just go to the local host. Now you can see I have home order items in cart. And basically with JavaScript, what we were able to do was if I click on add to cart, then you can see that number has changed item in cart one. And if I let us say add burger, then it will be, let us say I have ordered. Now I have two items, right? Yesterday it was only one item. And if I like, let us say add again, you can see the cart has changed as well as we have three items in my, like, let us say your orders. I have a message functionality and I have an order button, right? So the bug is fixed where only the first item was visible and the uh, fix was to basically, yeah, fix was to basically add plus equal to, right? So now from now on, what we will be doing is that every time I like, let us say click on this button, I want that particular item to be removed from the list. Okay, so we will be doing that in, uh, if you can see, I have like remove button in an HTML and then I am uh, like having basically an HTML element of button. Uh, so what it is doing is uh, I am getting a button for each function, uh, like, you know, item. And if I go to my browser, uh, let us say dev tools, and if I check this, right, so you can see that it says on click remove and then in the round bracket, it says zero. So in round bracket, it says zero. And then for the item number two, see it is highlighted as item number two when I hover over it and item number three will be highlighted. So on the item number two, I have removed item as one. So we were able to do these things using, using like the JavaScript. So we had check out main and order the JS file, right? So what today's agenda will be to send this order information to the server as well as having security and authentication, right? So basically, uh, what we are doing is today's agenda will be for it was for the deployment, right? But it doesn't really make sense to go for deployment when like, uh, let us say I haven't even added the user functionality, right? So what I have done is, uh, if you go to the Trello board that I have, okay, uh, let it load. So in the Trello board, I have made changes. So this is the Trello board. I hope that everyone has the link of the Trello board. 
and uh, I'm also like posting all the videos in this Telugu itself. So you will see that deployment was on the day eight and the security was on the day nine. But uh, basically security is like authentication and authorization, things like this. So what I have done is I have moved it to day one. Today we'll be looking at the web security, like how to make a secure Django application as well as how to add users how to make a new user as well as how to interact with the Django admin panel. Like when I'm making an order, I want it to be visible on the Django admin panel so that admin can look at the order, like which user has performed which order, right? And we'll be seeing like how to make it uh, like, you know, a secure login and sign up page. And then tomorrow we'll be deploying hosting will be learning about aws how hosting works how deployment works and then on the final day because we'll be completing our project uh, today on the final day i will be going over the project again and then we will be also learning some other things that are required for the web development like let us say git and github as well as things like uh, how to manage the files on the web server right these are really important things because you are probably like you know developing the application on your local host right so what the pro uh, agenda of the final project will be so when we have deployed it, we will understand how the project was built, how the deployment was built, and then we will be learning how to manage that application. Because managing an, an application is really important thing. Sometimes what happens is when you join in a company, they give you an application that you need to manage. It doesn't have like any programming or coding. You just need to like, let us say, refactor the code or let us say, make it, make a clean code and as well as manage that application when a bug arrives, right? So you will be solving that. So you'll be seeing that how these things can be done. And if there is uh, some like, you know, time, then we will be also doing things like le uh, learning some of the PHP because it is also important to get some kind of knowledge on like how to work without framework. So currently we are using framework and today you will see like, you know, the true power of Django, like why Django is really popular as well as why we are using a web framework that is Django. Why not like just simply using PHP that will let us uh, like you know do the backend without uh, uh, like you know uh, thinking about things like model and everything. You can just create the database and then get the data and uh, make changes. So we'll be seeing that today. Uh, so let's get started. So first thing that I want to do is I would like to make this remove button functional. So what we'll be doing is first I will create a function in uh, Python in like uh, JavaScript. You know the function is created using like uh, remove. Let us say the function keyword name of function, and then I can have like any uh, parameter. Let us say if I say x or i or let us say n. So what it is is basically remove uh, like remove item for n number of item element that I have in uh, here. Uh, if you can see. If I get this, then you can see I have remove item zero, right? So I'm targeting this zero uh, like element. So I will say remove item n, and then I will start writing the actual code here. So here I will say that let uh, first I will get the orders that are stored in our uh, let us say uh, local host. So let I will say parse it as JSON and then local storage, and then I will say that get item. Sorry get item and then uh, I have stored in localhost with the name orders, right? So if I go to application, here you can see I have orders. So this is what I'm targeting. So I will say that orders and then uh, next thing that I want to get is I also want to like, you know, remove, let us say, reduce the amount of total I have. So I have a total as 11.97, right? So what I want is I want to decrease it every time I remove an item. So this thing can be done by, let us say, first I will target the total variable that is stored in our local host. That will be local storage. It is not like we don't need to pass it as JSON because it is just a like number. And then I will say like get item and then uh, I can target total. Right. And then what I will say is like, uh, let us, I want to update the total. I don't have to initialize it again. I have already initialized it like let total. So next thing I will do is like uh, let total. I will make sure that it is in the number format. So I'm uh, doing something called as time conversion. So I want to make sure that this is a number, not a uh, like string. You saw in JavaScript, a string zero and number zero will give you equal to, right? So, but the arithmetic will not be possible. So I want to make sure that this is the, like a number data type. So number total, and then I will say that 
number and then I will say order. Now what I want, I want to target the number of element I have. So let, let us say remove item zero, right? That will be possible if I say n. So order n. So let us say I have remove item one. So it will be like, you know, entering is just order one. And then from order one, I want to like, let us say, get the name of item. Okay. And then uh, what I will be doing is I will be removing that particular order. So I can, uh, we have learned uh, a function then in array that was splice. So order splice. And then I will say the like element n and then I want to remove one element. So uh, order splice n. Next thing I want to do is I want to also update the local storage that I have. When I have spliced that uh, element from the array, I want to update the local storage. So local storage dot uh, set item. So I want what I want to set is orders that I have stored. What I want to do is let us say uh, JSON dot uh, stringify. I want to convert it as JSON, then orders. Sorry, uh, order. Because it is order, not orders. We are targeting this variable right here. You can see. It is same as that. And here I'm targeting orders. So remove, uh, remember the name of variable that you have given and the name of variable that you have stored in your local version. Next thing I want to do is I also want to update the total. So again, I will say local storage dot uh, set items. And then I will target the total variable. Uh, right. And here I will say that uh, total. That is new total. don't forget to like the give the semicolon even if you don't give the semicolon it will work but it is a good idea to do that now i have updated the order i have updated the total right what i want to do is uh, this particular listing is possible uh, in yesterday we saw with the shopping cart where i am like you know using the for loop so i also want to update this uh, shopping cart function right so what it will do is it will update this list here. So shopping cart, I will run the function again so that it is populated again. What I will be doing is by default, if I remove an order, this will not change in real time, right? And it might change, but it might give me some bug because there is some uh, like, you know, some catching issue or something. What I want to make sure that it is always on always having the, like, you know, the updated list. So I will do like a uh, window. Uh, so window is my actual window, like this tab. What I will be doing here, window location. Location is basically the main, this location. That is 127, 8,000 port order. I want this location to reload. All right. And then I will give semicolon. So now uh, if I come here and if I refresh, then if I click here, you can see that uh, only two orders are there. If I go to home and I add uh, like multiple things, you can see that these things are changing in real time. And if I uh, do this, then you can see it is four. If I remove, it is three. And then let us see if I remove the burger, it is two again. So this was the remove functionality that I had. And I think uh, you guys, guys have understood what uh, functionality remove is and how we can do that. So basically what we did was in the, we first loaded all the orders then we loaded the total amount. Then what I said was, uh, whatever order, like, you know, the N1 and then uh, let us say order one. And from order one, I want to target an element that is on the, uh, on the first uh, index. That will be the second item. So the price. So I'm saying the current total that will be like 5.98 minus the price of the item that I have. So let us say if I remove 299, then we'll see the total will change remove total is 299 right so we are doing this here and then what i am doing is order loss price where i am saying that uh, for the first element i want to remove one element only then i am updating the local storage so this here if i remove it you can see that it is again an empty variable correct and now you can see like there is total and there is some number right this is why i was saying that we only want to get 
two decimal values in our total value. So that this kind of thing, which are like, you know, like this is E minus 15. This is a really small number. And this is issue with the JavaScript itself, right? So this kind of things can be, uh, we can, we don't have to worry about this if we are like, you know, uh, managing our data types really well. So you can see that total says 0 0.00, even though it says here. And if I let us say add something, add here, right? So now you can say it says 2.9 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, But I only want to care about 2.99. So that when the order is actually happening, only 2.99 is being deducted from the user's account. So this was the remove function. And uh, we also saw like how, what are the issues with JavaScript what are the, so, and how you can deal with it. So basically, if I go to template and uh, order, no, not template and order. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No. So check out. Yeah. So here I'm saying that total bill, which is this amount right here, I'm saying that inner HTML equal to you want to parse it as a float. Right, so total will become float. Let us say if the value is three, then it will become 3.00. And I'm saying that I want to fix it to the only two decimal values. So remember to do things like that so that uh, your calculations are correct every time. So now I have created the remove function. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to make request to the server. That I can do. So let us say uh, I have a message, right? I have this message which says your message, correct? I want to target this. What I will say is let message equal to document dot. I will say query selector. And now I have given some ID to that message, right? So the text area name message ID equal to message. So I will just copy this keyword so that I'm not making any, uh, let us say, mistake in uh, spelling. Hashtag, then the name of ID. You remember that this is how we were, we can like, you know, target IDs. That was hashtag and then uh, the name of the video, like ID. Then I will say, I will, uh, let us say, create a function. So what I can do is, so function, I will say order. This function will help me make orders. So order function. And this will by default not take any uh, like parameters. When I click on it, this should run. That is the goal. So I will say that let, uh, first I want to test if we are able to make request. So I will say let test equal to, this is testing message, right? And second thing I will also do is, so let us say let, let MSG, uh, which will be short form for the message. I will say this message dot value, correct? This is, value. Okay. So I'm saying that whatever value is stored in this variable, I want to store it in uh, MSG variable that I have created. So next thing I want to uh, do is basically I want to specify the URL like uh, where we are making this request. So I will say that let URL equal to now remember this is important. URL will be order correct this is the URL order, but there is again a slash at that. The browser will add this slash by itself, but when we are like writing code, you have to add this slash by yourself. So I have given the URL. Now I will create a, uh, like an array of order data that I want to sh uh, share with the server. Basically what it will be doing is I want to share it as a JSON and we know for JSON what I have to do is order let order data equal to I will initialize order data and then I will say that in order data I want to target a key that key will be a uh, test and here I want to store whatever is stored in the test variable right same thing will happen with message also if I say like uh, msg then it will be message correct next thing I want to do is I want to use fetch apis so in JavaScript, we have something called as fetch. If there is time, we will also see what are the other methods. But for now, in the modern JavaScript, remember this is how you are like, you know, talking to server. We are using fetch. So what fetch does is, I will say fetch. You can see the color has changed. So fetch, I will open a bracket. Then I will say URL. URL is basically this 
right? I have seen uh, like send the order. If I don't have a URL, I will just have to type this, uh, like you know, single uh, inverted comma slash order slash. So I can they uh, do that, but this is much more cleaner. Let us say I want to change the URL, I can just change it here, and it will be like you know saved to everywhere in my code. So after URL, what I will be doing is I will uh, open a curly bracket. In the curly bracket, I will say that the method of sending this data, I want to make it uh, post. There is get, post, update, and delete. They are the API method. So get is basically, if I go here, so this information that you can see in your URL, this is get, okay. In get, information is visible in the URL. You do this when you are like, you know, uh, let us say I want to go to this URL. So order will be visible. This is using get. But if I have something called as post, the information will not be visible in the URL. And also there is a limit of how much information you can send using get because the URL bar can only handle, I think, uh, 2000 character or something like that, but it is really low. So whenever you have large amount of data, or uh, let us say when you have sensitive data, uh, say login or something, try using post every single time. This is much more safe. We will see what that are at the end. Like uh, we'll be seeing what are the other method also. So for now, we will be using post to send this data to the server. Then I will say column, uh, I will say comma, why comma? Because I'm in the current basis. I don't have to use semicolon. Semicolon is for ending the statement. So these are the things that a lot of people make mistakes. So you know these things like where you want to which use which, which syntax. Second thing I will say is what I want to send in a body. So in, let us say every time there is a method, there is a method of get or like post, update or delete. Then we have some information that I want to send in body. Then I have a header. So for body, what I want is, I want uh, it to be JSON. So let us say JSON. Uh, stringify, I want to convert it as JSON. What I want to convert is order data. That variable we have, this order data. Remember in this order data, the order data key test and order data key message has value of test and message. Second thing I want to do is, uh, I want to get the information of headers. So I will say headers. And now I will again have a curly braces and say that uh, content uh, type. Yeah, so content type. So what uh, type of data I am sending, like who, and we'll be sending the JSON, right? Because remember in the JavaScript uh, like uh, uh, session, we learned that JSON is a universal format for sending and receiving data, right? So I will say type content is equal to application slash JSON, right? I will say no. So this is the information that I want to send. But there is something, another thing called as then. When this information is received to the, let us say, server, then how would I know if it is received, right? For that, I will say, I will create a function. Then I will give a parameter of response. Response is like any, any keyword. You can use any keyword if you want. Then here, I will say, I want, uh, let us say, console.log. Then I want uh, response, and then I will uh, say uh, what I can say is what was resp yeah, response status, right? So we have we want to print the response status of the response. Remember, two hundred is that response was good and data was sent. Four hundred and four is there is no server found, and five hundred is like there is some internal error with the server. Remember these things. So next thing I want to do is I would say, I would just close the statement. Then I will say that if, let us say, I want to handle the error. Let us say if response uh, is okay, then in the console.log, what I want is I want to print order success, right? But if it is not success, I will say else, console.log, so I will say order failed. 
So I have like fetch what I want to send after sending the data, what I want. Now there is some error. What I will do is catch. I want to catch that error. I will again say function. This function will have a parameter with error. What I want is in error, I will say I want to console.log any kind of error that there it is. Now, this is important. Why? Because so that whenever we have an error, we will know what that error is. Now, uh, next thing that I would like to, uh, like, let us just go over the code again. So that is, I will say that there is a variable of test. It will hold this string. That is, this is a testing message. Message will have the value of this variable message. We are giving an URL. We are creating, like uh, making the data that I want to send. That is order data. I am saying that this is the type of bit. And inside order data name um, and the first parameter name will like order data key name will be test. Order data key name, other key name will be message. Then I am passing the test and message, which is this variable and this variable inside this keys. So the value will be test and message. Then I am using fetch APIs of JavaScript where I am giving the URL, which URL I want to make request. I am saying that method will be post, body will be a JSON format of order data that I have, and the header will be content type application JSON when I am telling the browser that I am sending you the JSON file. Then I want some response from the server. Well, if the response is okay, like response is 200, then I will uh, get print of order success. And we'll be seeing uh, before the response, okay, that what is the number of response we are getting. And if there is any error, I want to catch that error also. Next thing I want to do is, but for this function to work, I have to execute this function, correct? So in the order.html, I will say here, in the order button, I will say on click equal to order function, correct? Now I have created the order function, but there is one more thing that I want to do. So next thing I will do is I will change the view. So in food order home, there is a, a view, correct? No, no, not food order. I'm handling all the orders in the food order, like uh, food orders instead of food order home. So in the food orders app, I will say view. Inside view, I have a view of order. Here I will do some things like first I will import JSON because the data is coming from the JSON to handle JSON. I want to import the JSON. Second, I will say from Django views dot decorator uh, decorators to so CS and then it is RF. I want to import uh, CSRF. Excellent. Okay, so what is actually happening? So in Django, what happens is that uh, like there is something called a CSRF that uh, that is cross forgeries uh, like uh, cross site request forgery, right? So what Django does is it is a kind of cyber attack where uh, like you know they can forge your like whatever the request and response cycle is going on between the client and server. It can be forced to, to do to like you know fight against that. Django has something called as uh, our CSRF token, where every time you make a request and response cycle, that CSRF token is initialized and it is checked to let the browser know that uh, correct user has like you know correct user has made this request and this request is like uh, valid. What I want is because I have not created any user, I want to accept the orders from there. So what I will be doing is from like, let us say Django view decorator. So next thing that I will be doing is uh, I will say add the rate uh, CSRF accept. So this is something called as decorator. In Python, there are some predefined decorator. Uh, if I go here, then you can see that. Uh, yeah, so we had not covered the decorator in previous session of Django. So decorator is basically, they start with like, you know, add the rate. Yeah, so they basically start with the add the rate 
and they said uh, they say that uh, below function which is using the decorator is like uh, performing some uh, something that uh, django will know like what is going on they have a specific use case you can create your own as well as there are some specific uh, like you know decorators available so when you, you will be learning about classes in Gen, uh, in python maybe some of you not know about classes so you should know like you should learn like uh, search for a i would say tutorial on python oops these are like basics of programming. I think in C and C++, you must have known about the object-oriented programming. So there is something called as decorator where you can add a decorator. So we are saying that this function for this function, which is using this decorator, I want to extend the CSI RF token, like you know, the checking of token, or let us say validation of token. So next thing I want to import is like from uh, Django dot again i will say http and then i will say that to import json uh, it was a response yeah so because our response is in json so that is what i am saying that i want to also import the json response to handle the json response that i am getting so i have orders uh, then i will say that request dot session for this session, which is like request and response session that is going on between server. Once the session is completed, once like the request and response is completed, I want to say that this is expired. Like this uh, uh, token is expired. Yeah, so request.session.set expiry will be zero that uh, the moment this request and response cycle is done, I want to expire this request and response cycle, uh, like the session that is going on. I want to, let us say, simply expire the current session. Then I will say that, uh, let us say, if you request dot method. So on server, I am saying that I want to, uh, like, you know, manage only the post. Uh, if it is get, then I will say get. But because we are sending our response as a post, right? I have to type post here also. Because it is if I will have a like colon and then in the indent, I will say like I will first save the data in the variable data equal to JSON dot loads. Okay. So like this is like import JSON. I'm saying that from JSON load request dot body. So whatever information I am getting from the body, I am saying that I want to load it because we are sending the information as JSON. I have to use JSON dot load to like load that information in the data variable. Then I will say that uh, let us say in this request session, okay, what uh, I will uh, do is let us say I had a variable name as test, right? So I am saying that test equal to name of variable where I am storing the data data dot i what i want to get is i want to get paste then i will say that print and uh, i will simply print this correct then i will do same for the message so when i say print whatever message is it will be printed in this terminal right so that i can confirm that data is coming in ideal scenario we don't want to print anything on a server terminal why because every time like let us say i am pr uh, printing something someone who has access to terminal they will be able to see what data is being shared even though it is post because i am explicitly printing that data but for us we want to do that so that we can confirm that everything is working fine then i will say uh return like what i want to return is json response and uh, i want to say that status equal to success okay so this is view okay and uh, what uh, we did was so you can see i don't have any error it is uh, working as fine that means my code doesn't have any error that django is able to catch if there is any error i have to uh, like see what the error is myself 
So basically, we first imported JSON, and then I'm loading the JSON, like loading the request body into a variable of data, and then I'm saying that, uh, sorry, there is a spelling mistake where instead of R, it should be session, that is this. Yeah. So I have like the session, so request dot session. So uh, this, keep these things in mind, they are really important. So that, that is why you should always go over your code again to check if it is like correct or not. So request dot session test like key is key name of key is test, right? So I'm saying that data dot get test. And then I'm saying that data like for the message key, I want to print whatever information is stored for the key message. And then uh, I just simply want to return the uh, like status as success. If like there is nothing in the problem. So I will basically refresh it and then open the browser console. I will, uh, let us say, give any random message. I will say order. Okay. In console, I have 200 uh, C and I have order success. Now in ideal scenario, I should also so, uh, see this information in the terminal. It says like this is testing message and it says like uh, none. So that means my the test that I have, right? The test that I have written is going on, but this is not uh, passing. Uh, let's see why. Yeah, because I have MSG instead of message. The key name is MSG. So I will come here, send it again. Again, 200, the uh, order was success. I have, uh, this is testing message, and then the message that I have written, which is just some gibberish like uh, Q, A, Z, uh, X, right? That means I am able to send this data to the server from client side to the server side. So this is how you like uh, work with the data in Django when you are like making some request. We made a post request, correct? Next thing that uh, I would like to do is basically, uh, let's see what else you can do. What else that I wanted to cover was, just give me a second. I am checking what else was that I need to cover. Yeah, so instead of test, I will now send orders. So I have this order pasta and 299, right? Correct. So what I will be doing is I will make change here. I will say orders, correct. So now I should get orders and message. In checkout, what uh, I will be doing is instead of like, uh, let us say testing, I will say that let uh, orders equal to json dot parse local storage. I want to get all the uh, orders that are stored. Name of key was orders. And now here also I have to change. I will say orders. And again, uh, Let's see if I do I need to change anything else. No, I don't need to change anything else. So now uh, I have this. Now if I change, uh, like make request, I should be able to get orders that are stored in my local version. Currently, you see like uh, my server was refreshed after I saved the page. Here I will first remove it, go home, and uh, let us say I want this. I have pasta burger and then pasta. I will write some message. Let us say extra toppings. I will make order. I got 200 order success. In here, I got, uh, you can see that I got pasta 2.99. That is the price of pasta burger 5.99. That is price of burger and then again pasta. And I got the message of extra toppings. So I was able to send the order message to the backend, right? So next thing that uh, I would like to do is, yeah, so next thing that I want to do is, I again uh, want to, let me see what I can, what else that I wanted to cover was, 
um, uh, made a list of things that I want to cover today. I just uh, need to check again. Yeah. So I also want a success page where when the order is done, uh, this should like, you know, give me a success page like, yeah, it was successful. Today. That can be achieved basically by saying that in the checkout.js after I have got the response and after I uh, got like, you know, let's say order is success. Before that, what I want is, uh, let's say, yeah, we can first uh, replace it. So window dot, uh, yeah, the location URL dot replace. And I want to replace it with success. So instead of order, I will have success. And if let us say you, when you are doing the project and you want to change the URL, you can change it to order slash success. So whatever URL you want, you have to enter entire URL after the domain name. So my domain name will be 127.0.0.1 and then uh, port 8000. And then this is my entire domain and this is my uh, rest of the URL. So uh, I will be saying it, uh, saving that uh, in slash uh, success, right? Next thing I want to do is after my order is completed, I want to make sure that uh, order information from localhost is also deleted, right? So that he cannot, like, you know, user cannot accidentally make same request again. So that will be local storage. And then I will say like uh, set item, like I will say a new uh, information on that. So orders, here I will say JSON dot stringify. And I will say that I want to set it to none. That is simply uh, like, you know, an array. Okay, then I'm getting some error. Okay, so now. Yeah, so I had not closed this uh, bracket right here. So here I will say that local storage dot, I also want to update the total to zero. I want the total to be zero. So this thing should be happening. Let us see if we are able to do this. I will refresh. I have three item. I will just enter something. Now you can see like uh, order is nothing like it has uh, gone to like again uh, anti array because we have not created the success uh, template as a success view and we have not routed success. I am getting the page not found in it. I will go back even uh, and if I go to order, it has turned to zero and the total is also zero. So next thing that uh, we would like to do is basically I want to create a view and I want to make uh, like you URL for the success as well as create a template. So first just go to a view. So the view will be basically inside. Yeah. So let me just uh, exit from now. So basically what I want is I want the view in the food order set because I'm handling all the orders inside the food orders application. So food order and I will go view. And here I will create a new view of def success. I will say request. And now I will say simply read, uh, sorry, return. Render what I want to render is basically uh, on request. I want to render food orders success dot HTML. Right. So I will be creating the success.html inside a template food orders. And here I will create success.html. Correct. Next thing I want to do is I also want to give a URL so that I don't forget later on. And remember yesterday I told that we are handling all the URLs in the project URL file instead of creating a separate URL file for each application. 
So here I have already have URL for the main uh, when the user visits the domain. Then I have for order, I will say also have a success. So we'll give it a name of success. And then uh, if I let us say do this, I will be having success and then success. Correct. In success, I will simply say which one uh, order was successful. Correct. To saving, save it. Now let's add some information. Let's add some message. Order, order was successful and inside my server, I can see some random message that I have typed and the name of order that I had. So next thing that I would like to do is, uh, let us say I also want to like, you know, uh, show the information to the, like, you know, let us say nav bar or something. When the user will go to success, I want to make sure that it can see what orders he had made or let us say, he can also inherit the base HTML. So to, uh, for doing that, what I had to do was, I will simply say extends, and it was based on HTML. I want to extend the base dot HTML. The URL will be based on HTML because it is the like you know the file is directly inside the template. I don't have any sub directories. I'm just saying that this is the project specific URL. Just uh, use it. Then I will say uh, basically uh, block title. block title and here I will say success and then I will say and win. Correct. The next thing I will do is uh, I always tell you to load static uh, if necessary but we don't have any static so I will simply say that block content and then here I will say that I want to end this specific block. Here I can simply say that uh, I want a container fluid of uh, bootstrap. Here I will I want a division with h1 tag where I will say that order you see and if I press window plus dot I will get this emoji selector where I can like select an emoji. I will like you should know these things also, like how to add an emoji. But the best thing to add, uh, like uh, if you want to add an emoji, don't uh, use like, you know, window plus dot. I'm just doing it for like showing you, but try to use uh, something called as an HTML entity that we have seen in the HTML uh, like uh, tutorial. Well, I can, let, let's say, and percent and then the number of whatever entity I want. But I don't remember the entity number, so I will simply say, and add an emoji, at least it will work on my system. But if you want some different system, it might not work if that person will not have this particular emoji pack installed in his system. So make sure that you are using HTML entity because they will be available and they will be like, you know, rendering on every browser, every system that you have. Next thing I will do, I will also like, you know, give out the order that I have created, like order that I have said. So let us say you have order and here I can simply say that inside a due tag I will say orders. Now this should ideally show me all the orders that I have made. Refresh it. You have ordered but I am not getting any order. Why I am not getting any order? Because I am not passing that uh, particular information to the template and I can do that by using the views, right? So view and success, right? Inside the success, what uh, I will be doing is, again, I'm saying that request session and uh, what was the name? Set expiry to zero. So that once the request response cycle is over, I want to make sure that this particular session is uh, like, you know, destroyed so that uh, no one can like, you know, change anything on that. Then I will say that orders equal to request 
dot session and inside the session i will say orders like whatever order i am getting right and then i will pass on this information using the return it will be basically uh, let us say orders and then orders so now if i go here we refresh it i can see the information past the 2.99 right so this is how you can share the information on server as well as show that information on the browser after it is being shared from like getting that information like again you are getting the information from server and now you are showing something that was on the server onto the client machine correct next thing i will do is i want to create a form for registration and authentication so let's uh, come to the registration and, uh, and authentication so basically uh, what uh, i will be doing is let me first uh, uh, close this uh, just give me one second i will be back okay sorry about that so next thing I want is I want to add users so that we can have login and registration functionality. Correct. And we will be also saying how to show this, uh, like save the order inside a database. So next thing is uh, where I will handle the registration. Yeah. So I will handle the registration and login in the uh, food order home. You can also handle it on the food orders, but I will say like, because I want to like, you know, when the user enters my website, let us say I want to make him log in. So in future, for now, what I will be doing is I will only make him log in if he want to place an order. Okay. Other than that, I will not make him log in. So he can come here, but for now I will place it in the food order home so that in future, let us say I want to make it uh, so that only the registered user can visit my website. I can also do that. So in the view, uh, what uh, I can do is, yeah. So instead of view, let's do one thing. We will use Python modules. Remember in Java, uh, JavaScript and Python, we can create a file and then import that file using that name. And then we can also import any class or function we have. So we have like from dot model, models import food. So it is importing the food class model, right? So what I will, I will do is I will, instead of like, you know, creating it here, I will create a new file, which is not uh, like, you know, uh, related to the Django. I can just give it any name. So I will say, right, forms.py. Here I want to like, uh, what I handle the registration forms, right? To handle the registration form, what I can do is I have created a form. I will have cleared the class here for the registration. Then I will use the use this class to import it later. So simply what you want is from uh, first from Django, you want to import forms. Okay. Then you want to do is from Django, uh, you want to import the country and from country, there is an auth group. From the auth group, you want forms. And then from that, you want to import user creation form so this particular uh, so this particular class that we have or function that we have will help me create a new user django already has functionality to create a new user you don't have to like you know create your own uh, let us say class or function to handle creating user or managing session or let us say making user login. You can handle it by using the default configuration that is available in the Django itself. And not only that, you can also change that configuration. So what I mean to say is, so let us say first, uh, I want to import uh, everything. So Django dot, I want to again go to config from the auth group. Uh, what I want is models. I want to import user model this user model will save the user information inside database correct remember when we said pip python manage.py make migration there were 11 tables created instead we only wanted one for like you know saving the full info but by default it created 10 and 11 tables user is one of them where if i create a new user it will be saved to that particular table i don't have to create a table on my own second thing is i will create a class where I will say that new 
user if this is the name that I am giving form. So whenever a new user is joined, I want to give him this form. So I will say uh, user creation form. Now I can see that I have not actually imported it anymore. So user creation form. Second is uh, what I want is I want I want the user email when he is registering. I will say email, then forms. So this forms is basically this, and then I will say that email F I E L D. Sorry, email field. I will say that email field is required equal to. So every time I'm giving a new user by default, what will happen is you remember when we were like, you know, uh, using Python manage.py create super user. It asked me for my username. It asked me for my email and it asked me for my password. Correct. That is only information it asked, but by default, it will not ask for those information for like, you know, normal user, because I'm the staff, you uh, like in the Django admin, my uh, designation will be staff user. So that is why it has asked me, but for basically uh, you want to like, you know, make sure that e uh, email is required. If you want, you can also um, uh, do that, that the username is required, but by default Django makes sure that username is unique as well as it is required. Next thing is, because we only had username, password, and email, I want more information from the user. So what I will do is I will say class meta to handle the metadata of uh, my like you know uh, user. So I will say the model equal to user. So for the user model that I have here, so this class is basically like you know. Uh, what I can say is that this class will basically create a user. So what I'm saying is that for this particular class, I just don't want the name, email and password. I also want the first name and the last name. So I will say that fields equal to first I will say username, then I will say email and what else I want is basically first underscore name. So you have to make sure that this you are writing is correctly. And uh, I will say that last name. Then I will say password one and password two. Password one and two is basically you have to make sure that user is adding password twice so that it is sure that like, you know, when I'm, let's say I'm adding a password and I'm only uh, adding it for one time, I might have some typo mistakes. So next time when I will be login, I will be unable to log in. So I want to make sure user is adding password two time so that it is make sure that it is correct password during the registration. In login, I only want it one time. So I have created the form. Next thing that I would like to do is I want to go to the view and import this form. So I am on the home view. So what I will be doing is first I will import every module that I want. So with re render, I also want uh, redirect. Then I want like from forms, like from dot forms is root and the search for file name forms. I want to import user, uh, it was new user uh, form. This is the class that we have created. Next thing I want is from Django uh, dot country. Then I will say that auth group. I want to import login functionality, authentication, and I also want logout functionality. So login and uh, authentication, we just check if the spelling is correct. Um, it is uh, authenticate, when you go to the edge, e yeah. So it is authenticate. So authentication should also be handled by uh, whatever the Django functionality is and to log out also should be handled, handled by the Django itself. If I'm getting some error in message, uh, login or something, what I want is Django uh, dot country import messages. Then I want from Django dot HTTP, I want to import uh, HTTP response. 
this is you will see that when you create a new project this is imported by default that is django.http import http response but what i want is redirect sorry redirect correct why i want the redirect because let us say when i log out i want to redirect the user to the home page again so then i will say django dot urls i want to import reverse to check the reverse urls to make sure that everything is correct i have imported the food here and i am handling the uh, food information here so next I will create a view for sign up, user login and sign out. Okay. So we we'll check. Yeah. Just give me a second. So next thing I want to do is I say def and then I will say that sign up. And now I will get some request. First, I will create a dictionary where I will like, you know, simply send the form information. So I will say that CTX, we have seen that uh, we can send the context information using the return. So for CTX is like short form for context, you can name anything you want. I will create an empty dictionary. Then I will say that if request dot uh, method is equal to equal to post, right? I want to login information, registration information. This information should be sent using post so that uh, whatever password, email, and information the user is adding is not actually visible in the URL. Because if it is visible in the URL, what will happen is next time when the user is like, you know, adding his data, it will make a request to that user and that URL will be saved in the browser history. So let us say if I am creating a user from Cyber Cafe or let us say PC room, the, they will be able to go back to the history, check the URL that what password and email I have added. So make sure that you are using post. And by default, it is post. So you just need to check that if it is post or not. In here also, just to confirm. Then I will say that uh, form equal to new uh, user form. And here I will say that request.post. I want to create a new user. And uh, I will say that if form dot is valid, we are checking the form validation that all the information correct is, uh, added is correct. There is nothing like, you know, malicious. So Django has this kind of functionality by default. Whereas when you are using PHP, you have to handle it by yourself. If form is valid, what I want is I want to save that form. Say form means see the form is equal to new user form request post. That means I am creating a new user, saving it in the form. And then what I want is I want to make sure that form got saved. So the new user information will be saved inside the class of like in you know, a user creation class. So that in the user class, whatever new user I'm creating, it will be saved. So that is what is happening with dot save. Then I will say that. I want to return that user will be redirected back to the home. When the user has successfully registered, I want to make sure that he has been redirected to the home. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, so I hope you guys can see me. See, the issue is that uh, 